So my mission is to ensure that at least every week I give you a chance to meet an awesome person who you don't know or you do know, but will tell a story you don't know. So the person I'm excited to be speaking to, this is our second meeting. Can you imagine? This is how I roll. This is so sad. I need to buy her at least two coffees before we do this. And she's the author of two very awesome books. Show me she had written a book before this, but I've never seen it. So I can only tell you about the ones I know. Things I will tell my daughter, the uncensored truths on love, money, and womanhood. And I'm too pretty to be broke and other lies you've been telling yourself. Her name is Joan. Yes, that's how you say it. Uh, Fatia. And I, I needed to know, in this particular book, which is your favorite chapter? Things I will tell my daughter. Be an informed feminist. <sighs> yes. 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 Because we, we feminists are misunderstood. In totally. the also, a lot of women also don't understand. They don't get it. Yeah. Actually, um, one of the things I need to do right after we finish this interview is finish my conversation on feminism. And the fact that um, I love this amazing woman, I think she comes out of a South African country who said, Jesus was a feminist and so am I. And in the Gospel of Luke, the only thing that Jesus does consistently is ensure that women are front line and center in his life. So well done for you. Okay, so let's talk about the other book. I'm too pretty to be broke and other lies you've been telling yourself. What inspired this book? The lies. Which <laughs> nutcase did you meet? <laughs> The, 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 especially the young women, uh -huh. yeah, going around thinking that, that how they look is the most interesting thing about them, and, and, and it's sad. Cute. Yeah. So and you realize you need to write the story. Yes, we do. But where does that emanate from? This whole idea of I'm too pretty to be broke. Because I have um, a personal experience. A couple of years ago, um, when I was just buying my home, forget the flat, the home. And I remember after paying the stamp duty because the governor does not take installments and paying the lawyer, at least he took installments. I was back to two minute noodles. But the beautiful thing is everybody around me was like, go for it, we'll buy you lunch, we'll buy you drinks, you'll survive, it will be three months and you'll be back on track. And then I had dinner with a woman I used to actually admire. And I remember telling her about my financial predicament and she's like, and you look like that. How are you broke? And I was like, what in heaven's name does that mean? I was so broken and then so upset with her. To this day, she still asks me whether she can come home. I refuse to invite her to my house. I don't roll like that. Serves her age. So, no, really. But because she was, this woman is still to this day, 13 years older than me. Then she had two children older than me, I'd think was seasoned, and was dumb enough to ask me how, given the way I look, I could possibly be broke. That's how we are raising our daughters. That? Yeah, pointing, that's the only thing you, you tell them, that they're pretty. You don't, if they do well in school, it doesn't matter. But if they look good, then it's a big deal. <laughs> People who do that should be shot. And I, I know the DPP, so we can actually make the case go away kidding but I'm just saying okay your favorite chapter in this book that would be I'm um, too pretty to be broke uh-huh yeah it's too pretty to be broke I was I wrote it out of anger oh <laughs> <laughs> I like that you're very very honest about that but what has been the reception to this book because these two are very different yeah they're very different yes what has been the reception to this book out of the 4,000 copies you sold uh, which of the two books sold the most, by the way? This one. Of course, this. Yeah. What has been the reception of this one? Because this is hard truth. But this is uncomfortable. It is. But it's good. Yeah. Yes. So I've had women telling me, I felt like you were talking to me. Uh -huh. Like you knew what was going on. Uh -huh. So it's personal. I think it's, yeah, it's, it's the truth. You yeah. don't want to be told, but you still want to be told. But, but you still want behind. To be told. Yes. Behind. Because I'd rather be told you're pretty, yeah. and hence you cannot be broke. Oh, girlfriend, just the way you can't eat fame, can't eat pretty. Yeah, cannot eat pretty. But I'm sure you've got another book inside you somewhere. Yeah, almost done. Done with the first draft. Uh huh. Yeah, it should be done in February, March. Along the same lines, or? No, different for, for the boys. <gasps> Okay, so you do know you're going to get that whole thing of what does a woman know about men? I know, uh -huh. but I do. I was raised 
worked with six men. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I work with men, so why should uh, why should I know anything about, about manhood? Men, yes. Yeah. Well done. So for anybody who has yet to buy your books or a person who's thinking of writing a book. Let's start with those who haven't bought your book. What's the one thing you'd say about your book that is important? Either book. Buy it because. Because I cannot be your PR machinery forever, madam. It's personal. <laughs> it's uh-huh. personal. I'm not trying to. It's not how to. It's uh-huh. This is what I learned. Mm-hmm. It's, it's personal lessons. OK. Yeah. For, so literally, this is important reading. Yes, it is. OK. And for a person thinking of writing a book and they've been told exactly what you've been told, Kenyans don't read, um, you know, of course they've gone knocking on every publisher's door and been told they're not interested, what would you tell them? Kenyans read mm-hmm. and you can self-publish. It's, it's the it way to works. go, isn't it? Yeah, it works. But isn't that such an indictment on the publishers? I mean, what are they doing? In a world where clearly very soon every book will be digitized and will be sitting on a tablet or a laptop, aren't they literally ensuring that they will see the end of their own businesses? Yeah, they By don't turning around and saying, we only do school books. Yeah, they don't want to market. They want the book that someone will come and ask for. They don't want to... Ah, uh, is that... You hadn't thought about it like that. Yeah, and then who are you? They want... If it's fiction, they want the names that are already there. So are you saying if I wrote a rubbish book because my name is Caroline Mutoko, they probably will say, yes, we're interested? Yes, yes, they will. Scoogey, <laughs> don't worry. And when I'm ready, I'll self-publish and I'll get Joan to tell me how to do it. So like I said, it's, it's interesting conversations with interesting people that have not been regurgitated out of the system that tends to tell the same annoying stories. And I'm also looking to you to tell me who else I can look for. However, disclaimer. Don't catch feelings if I don't feel for the person you send me, okay? And don't catch feelings if I don't review your book. So I review your book and everybody thinks they need to send me their book. Wow. And I'm like, it's okay, I'll read it. If I don't review it, um, it's because it didn't work for me. It's not an indictment on whether your book is wonderful or not. I'm crystal clear about what I can and cannot do. And I will not do something just because you sent me your book. Okay? Good. However... I, because you're going to ask, get asked this again. So what did you pay her? And what commission is she getting out of your books? Filch. Nothing. But what did I tell you I need you to do? To pay it? Forward. You have to. Yes. It I will am. come back to me. But pay it forward. Very important. I'm you're an awesome to... woman. Buy the book. Somebody needs something for Christmas. Or at least somebody needs to turn their life in 2018. This one, I think, is imperative You're between the ages of 18 and 26. If you don't read this before you're 26, you're cooked anyway. Um, no, I'm not kidding. This book reminds me of, he's just not that into you. Yeah. And I remember when I first read it, I must have been like 27. I was like, where was this book when I was 18? <laughs> so get it. And look for Joan on Facebook. Yeah. Yes, I love the fact that she just shares my videos and she says, and you can get the books here. And, and thank you for making the time. You're thank you awesome. for having me. Thank you so much.